And we're going to go ahead and bring this up so that they can see themselves and see it says the Bible. Okay. Right. All right. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. In one moment, you'll be able to see us and not just hear us. Won't that be a treat? Yes, it will. We're so glad. Oh, there you are. Hey, hey. I'm still a ghost. Yeah, there, there you are. Hello. Um, welcome to Trail Talk. We're here in our, um, we're in the classroom studio today. Yeah. We're, you just never know where you're going to find us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've always got some something new and breaking to share with you. Yeah, we do have some breaking. In mugs. fact, this just in. Yeah, these mugs are available in our gift shop. Check them out. Yeah. Oh, they're, you know, there you go. Look, it's got our logo on it. Well, we were there. We go. Our cameraman's in training. Yeah. And you see, they they clang real well. They're great. They keep everything super warm and they're $10 and 95 cents. So uh, call us, look us up on the internet, buy it online, buy it online. You saw it here first right, breaking on trail talk. Well, enough about that. Right. It's time for us to get to the nitty gritty, the nitty gritty. The reason that you're all here is to learn about Oklahoma inventors and their inventions. And Mary, when, you know, digging into all of this, yeah. it it was didn't take us long to realize this is worthy of more than one episode. So today is volume one, episode one, uh huh, of um, many more to come. Right, and we're not going to do episodes like Star Wars, no. you know, where this is episode four, and then we'll. But it's the first one you see. Yeah, and it's the first one, and we'll know that we're starting at number one, and we will progress from there. Right not digress even though we have occasionally been known to do that yes we are not doing that today so enough about all that we're gonna jump in right just in. jump right in and introduce you to our first inventor that we're going to talk about and you probably when you saw the word inventors and inventions you were probably thinking about gadgets right textiles or, right or you know something cotton gins right. well the thing we're going to introduce you to the person um is really a, a fairly famous historical character and their contribution to language, to Native Americans, mm -hmm. uh, to the world, actually. I, I was in the British Museum in London and they have a, it's, it's not huge, but they actually have a, a place where they um, honor and recognize this man that we're going to talk about i and thought that's really yeah and he's he he ended up in oklahoma Real, i guess yeah. you say but we claim him yes um anyway i want to introduce you to sequoia now oh, sequoia is the cherokee name that um he went by his he had an another name he was named after his father george guess mm -hmm. um he was um part Cherokee and uh, part, I, I believe it was German.
could be written in down. History. Right. It could be read. Mm -hmm. It could be um, shared, not just by word of mouth. Right. And um, how which that, would eventually be lost over a period of time because, I mean, you can only precisely go on for so people long. were, the Native Americans were, had learned, realized they had to speak English. Mm -hmm. um, so are we on? We are, okay. Uh, yeah, we're okay. There. We're, okay, we're there. Um, so um, anyway, then he traveled to Washington, D.C. And that is where the portrait that we have, which of course, this is just a print. Right. But that is where, that's a well-known picture of yes, him. Yes, um, this portrait was painted. Um, the pipe he has in his mouth that he's smoking is a, you know, a like a Cherokee like a symbol thing. Right. Um, and this medal around his neck, uh, he was awarded that medal. And on one side, it had words in English. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, it had the same message written in Cherokee. Mm -hmm. And uh, legend has it that he never took it off. Really? And even was buried with that uh, okay. medal around his neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> anyway, he, uh, a lot of their kids know his name. Uh, they do. Well, because they have this. There's a book, a book, uh -huh, yes. a book award mm -hmm. that is uh, given out every year for children's books. Mm -hmm. And um, the Sequoia Award is mm -hmm. quite prestigious. It is. And his picture is it's a, mm -hmm. it's that same. Right, yeah. right, is always on there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he built a house in present day Salisaw in 1829. And that was his permanent home. Mm -hmm. And that became. A historical, historical landmark. A historical landmark. Um, it was operated by the Oklahoma Histo Historical Society until 2016, when the Cherokee Nation purchased it. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I don't know what you know what they're doing with it, but I have a feeling they probably made steer it. some type of historical, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I mean, I'm sure the Cherokees want their the nation would want to care for that right property, it's part of their history, right culture. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, I don't want to say it's it's legend, but the most accurate historical information we have about his death mm -hmm. is that he went to Mexico and uh, he, I know he did go to Mexico to help uh, try to help with um, spreading the idea of creating a language. Mm -hmm. Uh, or a, an alphabet for a language, but um, at any rate, he he died there. And I know also from studying Jesse Chisholm that Jesse Chisholm was part of a group of people who went to try to find him because he, he left Oklahoma him. and kind of disappeared, mm -hmm. and nobody was really sure what happened. And Jesse Chisholm was able to he was with some other people, and they found someone who knew that he had it died, passed, right. uh -huh, and they, they buried him. Letter. Right. And yes, and they wrote a letter at Warren's Trading House in Red River. Mm -hmm. That's all it says. It doesn't say Red River where probably Texas, um, but said that he departed on in August of 1843. And one of his sons was there and was uh, at that time was at the Brazos River in Texas, about 30 miles above the falls and planned to return home in the fall. Mm -hmm which would mean back to Oklahoma, right. to Salisaw, what present day Salisaw. Mm -hmm. And the letter was dated actually two years after he's, he, he had, he had died. died. So. Yeah, that's true in 1845. So, um, and Jesse Chisholm signed that mm -hmm. letter mm -hmm. as a witness. So yeah. anyway, interesting connection, how Sequoia, um, you know, had this worldwide impact and yet Jesse Chisholm, who the Chisholm Trail was named mm -hmm. for the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center right. celebrates. Right. Um, he had a connection with yeah, Sequoia. Sequoia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of kind of an interesting little uh, a full circle kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like the six yeah. degrees type thing. Right. So uh, we're going to move on now and talk about another um, important um, invention. Mm -hmm. You probably see it every day. And yes, don't even exactly. Think twice about it. The yield sign. Right we're we're gonna. We have a truly um, 
awesome. novice <laughs> uh, camera person operating and she is doing a bang up job. She is. Yeah. So the yield sign was actually invented in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Way to go, T-Town. <laughs> Way to go. T-Town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, they, yeah. Uh, by Clinton E. Riggs. Yeah, Clint, yes, Clinton E. Riggs. Um, he worked for the Tulsa Police Department mm -hmm. and then uh, also was an educator. Right, was an educator, especially in the, uh, um, what am I trying to say? The, the, our, um, civil, well, yes, like um, police and I, troopers, people like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a word. Administrative. Yeah, Officer. so anyway, you guys just follow along the best you can while I have a little <laughs> brain spasm today. Um, anyway, his first sign said yield right of way, and it was not it wasn't the like upside down triangle that we're so familiar with. It wasn't with. even the right color, right. See, or it wasn't the same color. The same, same color. right color. Yeah. It wasn't the same color as you see. It was um, yeah. in the shape of a keystone, so it was, it was wider at the top and narrow at the bottom, but it was flat mm -hmm. across the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it was yellow, yellow with black lettering, right? Which would make it stand out. You know, we still do have yellow signs, mm -hmm, red right, signs, right? Just, um, the yellow with the black lettering was very different from the red with the white mm -hmm. lettering of the stop sign. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that it really got people's attention, mm -hmm. right? Which and that's what it was meant to do. Yes. And um, he put it at an intersection that was considered one of the most dangerous intersections in, in Tulsa. Tulsa. Uh -huh. And it went from uh, that to being one of the top 10 safest intersections just with that sign. in Tulsa, just by placing that sign there. Now the signs, probably there were two signs, you know how they'll do at an intersection, mm -hmm. two signs are yielding instead of stopping. Um, but they, uh, they later removed them from that intersection. And I mean, you know, as cities grow and things advance you know maybe they put lights there or mm -hmm. something could have um, been developed more yeah on. if any of you are familiar with tulsa it was at the intersection of first street and columbia avenue mm -hmm. so you know if that might be of interest to some of you right but um yes indeed the yield sign goes to uh the price for that invention goes to clinton briggs mm -hmm. tulsa of tulsa i think that's a super cool invention mm -hmm. that uh, in in talking to students about people who invent things, um, I I think that sometimes inventors, I mean their their minds are amazing. Kudos to anyone who's watching who is an inventor or knows mm -hmm. an inventor. I mean, I every time wow. I see something, I think of it, and I'm like, and then I see it later. Yeah, I'm somebody like, else somebody beat me else to it. Beat me that. Yeah, um, but inventions are they're solutions to a problem, but sometimes they go much farther than anybody ever dreamed mm -hmm. they would go. And I have a feeling that this yield sign, which it doesn't look the same in countries around the world, but every country has that has roads, uh -huh, they have mm -hmm. yield signs. So um, now we'll move on to the next great Oklahoma invention. <laughs> Let's wheel that puppy up here. We're not at, it's not Ace Hardware, although we do love Ace, Ace Hardware. Ace is the, the place. place. Ace donated a shopping cart to us. And so thank you, John, you're the man. Um, the shopping cart was invented in Oklahoma. I know, how awesome. I know, I All love this. All of us women love to shop. We do. Couldn't we, do it without a shopping we cart. We love these things. They are the best. Mm -hmm. But I was so surprised when I found out what the real motivation for inventing the shopping cart was because you know, in our day, uh, we just fill them up. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah. I mean, we just fill and there's them up. different. I mean, not. I guess you yeah, that wouldn't be considered a shopping cart. The little handheld things, but right. You you always tend to go towards the shopping cart because you can put more in it, and you can kind of lay on it. You know, yeah. while you're walking, put your purse, in, put your purse it, in, the kids it. in it. Yes, you know, exactly, everything. exactly. Um, but the reason, okay, Sylvan Goldman is the man mm -hmm. who invented this shopping cart and he owned a Humpty Dumpty. How about that for a blast from the past? <laughs> he owned a Humpty Dumpty grocery store uh -huh. and he wanted to know how he could move more groceries. Yeah. 
because the little baskets that you mentioned that was all people had to shop with yeah. and so can you they imagine could, going grocery shopping now with a little basket you'd have to have like two on It'd each be like arm a balancing and, act exactly. you have to take your whole family with you you get a you get you, one and right. you get one um so the he wanted to move more groceries he wanted to sell more and the best way to do it is to give people something larger mm -hmm. so they could buy more at a time. Yep. Brilliant. This man was a brilliant business mind. Yes, he was. Yeah. So um, he was pondering it one night in 1936. He was sitting in his office mm -hmm. at his grocery and <laughs> saw a folding chair, wooden folding chair, and a basket. Mm -hmm. And he puts that basket on that chair, puts some wheels, wheels on the legs on the legs of the chair, <laughs> and boom, he's figured out how to make a he shopping. He calls basket. it his folding basket carriers. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> what he called. Um, and then, so the first shopping cart. Uh, well, there was a a man the, named Fred Young. Yeah, the mechanic helped. Yeah, him. he worked for Goldman. And he began tinkering. Mm -hmm. That's a great word, tinkering. I Makes love that. Yeah. Tinkerbell. Yeah. Um, and so the first shopping cart had a metal frame and had two wire baskets, like one at the top and one mm -hmm. down below. Yeah. Um, and then there was another man who came along and figured out how to mass produce those things. The wire. Yeah. Things. And that's uh -huh. when they called it um, the folding <laughs> basket carriage for self-service stores. Now, if that's not a, or a mouthful, walking in, can I get a folding basket carriage for self-service store, please? Right, right. How, a shopping cart. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, their buggies or carts, carts or, or yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Um, we but they come in all different shapes and sizes now. Um, so the invention did not catch on no, right away, which I I found to be just kind of hilarious well, people probably thought i don't want to spend why do i need that i don't want to spend all that much money yeah you know yeah so evidently the men who came to shop thought pushing a cart around was effeminate mm -hmm. the women thought it was too much like a baby carriage one woman was even quoted as saying i've pushed my last, last baby. baby yeah and so neither people neither group, neither gender yeah really, they didn't want really anything cared to do with this no, so no. mr goldman i'm telling you this guy had a great business mind yeah he hired people to come in men and women and walk in the door and there was a greeter who would explain how to, <laughs> how use, how the to shopping use the cart. shopping cart yeah to be explained and then men and women would take the cart and go through and as regular shoppers would see them using it, it kind of just caught it, on yeah it caught on brilliant <laughs> that's all i can say that guy I had could see him on shark, shark tank but now in the day you know right well, time, he became thing. a multi-millionaire this thing was marketed or patented he applied for the patent in 1938 mm -hmm. it was uh awarded in 1940 and he became a multi-millionaire in the 40s can you imagine what that would be like now yes so um Man, mr goldman uh he, goldman family yeah yeah they they did all right <laughs> thanks to the shopping cart the um folding basket carriage made for self-service stores there you go thank you yeah yeah i love that full name that's that's a good one <laughs> that is like a three middle name name now. right yeah <laughs> okay now we are going to go on to our next um invention that up this there. Yeah, I'm going to slide this guy over here. That's this heavy. is actually, this actually belonged to my mom. So funny story, my aunt, <laughs> my mom's sister, she kind of like one day, she, she just, uh, there was a community that was selling off old parking meters and she went and bid on them and bought some. <laughs> So she gave one to us. It's not every day you see someone with a parking It's meter. not. And so I grew up with this parking meter at my house. I mean, you know, as a teenager, mm -hmm. it was probably when she got it for right. us. Anyway, we painted it red and um, it ended up here. But <laughs> the, the, the world, the first one was actually called Park O Meter. And that is a brand. That is the actual mm -hmm. brand of the one the that we one. have here. So that's kind of fun. So the very first one was put on what is was then called the corner of 
First Street, Street in Robinson. And Robinson in, in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. City. Yeah. yeah, and that July was... July 16th, 1935. 1935. So about the time... Of the shopping cart. Yeah, Mr. Goldman was starting to notice he needed a way to move more groceries. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl McGee was figuring out a way to help mm -hmm. out with a parking, parking situation. situation. Yeah. So um, before we get into him and the parking situation i think it's in, it'd be interesting to share some things about mr mcgee's life okay yeah yeah he was an interesting fellow. yeah so he moved to oklahoma city from new mexico mm -hmm. um he in 1927 in yeah he was a reporter for an albuquerque newspaper and played a pivotal role in uncovering the teapot dome scandal um in which wyoming? i yeah in wyoming the teapot dome oil field uh was um so the secretary of the interior albert fall was convicted of renting government land to oil companies in return for personal loans and gifts uh oh tisk tisk yeah naughty, naughty. and uh so i guess mcgee mr uh, wrote the story yeah that broke that story mm -hmm. yeah and uh he also wrote a series of articles exposing corruption in the new mexico court system and <laughs> and there's more was tried and acquitted for manslaughter after he shot one of the judges targeted in the series during an altercation at a Las Vegas hotel. This man had a life. You I'm know, the 1920s and 30s were a crazy time. The roaring 20s. Right? You know what they say? I mean, yeah. Las Vegas, Las Ooh. Vegas has always Monsters. been. Yeah. To live back what, is, what did they say about Las Vegas? Uh, what, what, what happens in Vegas, Vegas stays in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. McGee didn't stay there, y'all. He came to Oklahoma. No, he didn't. And invented the parking meter. Yep. So he uh, he got to Oklahoma City to start a newspaper, and uh, his he they realized that there was prob there were problems downtown with the parking, with the parking mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. and so he came up with this idea to put these parking meters out. They spaced them twenty feet apart. Right and uh painted the parking spot it cost about a nickel an hour yeah 20 feet apart does that tell you how big the cars were in those days <laughs> <laughs> at first i read that and i thought 20 feet you need what a and trailer, then it, yeah. and i don't want to meet then it occurred meet, to me meet. how big monstrous the cars were well, in those were. days the yeah. bigger the better yeah um so he uh but there was a lot of backlash over this parking meter. Oh yeah, people now, didn't think they should have to pay right. to park. It was an increase. They thought it, it was, was a, a tax. Uh, it was un-American by golly, <laughs> that they should have to pay a tax for owning a car mm -hmm. without due process of law. Yep, it, that's, yeah. No taxation said. without representation. Yep, un-American. Yeah. We almost had a tea party right there in Oklahoma City. Um, so, but but the businesses loved the idea oh, they because loved it. it was like I mean it was like a it was a nickel flow an hour people. yeah five cents an hour but it, exactly it motivated people to go get their business done get in their car and mm -hmm. leave so other people could come I mean mm -hmm. you can see the uh, urbanization or not the urbanization but the the growth of technology affecting people's lives and making things all about moving right. and going and faster faster yes. faster yeah yeah exactly um so the first meters were installed in July 1935 and by the 1940s there was over 140,000 parking meters operating in the United States mm -hmm. I got one of those. We got one of those bad boys right here. Now that's minus one. Yeah, that's right. This one 139,999 <laughs> parking meters on the wall. <laughs> but I mean, even these things, you know, you go up and slide your yeah. card on these things now. Or you just go to the booth and you park in a lot. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, parking all parking has innovate been mm -hmm. more innovative through the years mm -hmm. where you can, I mean, yeah, get a whole or build those parking garages that go up, yeah. you know, or can put a bunch of cars on one little block area. I so I know. I want to know who invented the uh, Carvana oh. coin operated like machine. Right. I yeah, want to go let a coin in and buy a car. Put a coin in, buy a car. And I have a feeling they're going to swipe your card for that one, Mary. 
And I don't mean take it from you. I mean, I mean just take it and say you're crazy. <laughs> Keep on trucking. <laughs> okay, guys, we have one more. I need I need a little sip of this yeah, we'll awesome dry. mug. Yep. Okay. There you All go. Right. Um, yeah. Aren't these awesome? That yeah, you can you can have your own mug if you want one, just like this from the Chisholm. I'm trying to make it focus there. Two five eight zero two five five six two six six nine two is our number. Two five two six six nine two. I know, guys. You just two, five, don't listen two. to me. Listen to there you. we go. Look at that. It's a work of art. It is. It is. And it it's is a nice, nice weight. Yeah, it's actually weighted in the bot. The bottom is very heavy, it's, so it's not going to tip over easily. Mm -hmm. No, it's that. Yeah. So it keeps it nice and warm. It's a, they're lovely. They are lovely. Okay, we have one last inventor, and this guy. I mean, if if you thought the alphabet was an interesting invention, mm -hmm. wait till you hear of what <laughs> this person did. We're talking about none other than Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett. Rodeo cowboy extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. Yeah. Um, now, Bill Pickett was actually, he was born in um, Texas. Uh -huh. In 1870. Yeah. Um, he was one of like 13, yeah, 13 kids children. or something. But he was, um, his uh, ancestry is African American and Cherokee. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, he, was married in 1890, so what was that, about 20 years old? Right. He married Maggie Turner, who was a former slave and daughter of a white Southern plantation owner, and they had nine children. That must have just been the thing back then, yeah. just yeah. having kids. Lots, big, big families. Yeah. So he left school in the fifth grade to go and work on a ranch, which, I mean. I mean, back then, that was pretty common. Right, that would have been in the you know, around 1880 or mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, cattle drives were big. Texas ranches were, it was popping up everywhere. The cattle industry was really going full, full blown in those days. And um, so he invented the technique of bulldogging cattle, which is grabbing them by the horns and wrestling them to the ground. So, you know, we're probably talking about longhorn right. cattle. Right. Um, now he invented this. I, I, I have probably taught this wrong because he didn't invent this as a rodeo event. He invented this as a way to work cattle. Right. And then it became, it became an event, an event that they now call steer wrestling. Mm -hmm. But when he bulldogged, and he was the original bulldogger. Okay. <laughs> Listen to this. He bit the cows on the lip and then pulled backwards and would catch them off guard and, they, and take you, them down. And you bite on my lip. I'm going to follow right? you. Right. Yeah. I, you know? I give. Yeah. I, I give. <laughs> I give. Uh, calf rope was what we used to say at our house whenever we gave, when we were given in mm -hmm. instead of I give up yeah. or whatever we'd say, calf rope. And that meant, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. <clears throat> so, um, they, you know, they, nobody else really ever got into the biting, mm -hmm. the lip biting thing, but, um, they, they used the bulldogging method okay. and evolved it into the rodeo event. But Bill Pickett, I mean, he was, he wasn't just an inventor of a, you know, a, a, a way to do his trade better and to, um, Entertain. Entertain. I mean, he was a top notch cowboy. Mm -hmm. And um, he he would do tricks and stunts at local county fairs. And that grew yeah, into traveling. And yes, uh, the Pickett Brothers Bronco Busters and Rough Riders Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Bill Pickett came to your rodeo, your rodeo yeah. was going to be a success. It was. Yeah. It was he traveled all around Texas, Arizona, Wyoming, mm -hmm. Oklahoma with that with that show. But um, here's here's something that um, I I mean it was a, it was a sign of the times in those days. But um, because he was African American, mm -hmm. he was not always allowed to compete in those rodeos. I have a feeling they would let the, him and his brothers perform. Right, because that wasn't a com competition mm -hmm. for but many. But com competing in the rodeos were not allowed was not allowed. 
So he uh, sometimes would tell people that he was he Comanche. Comanche. He was from the Comanche tribe. And um, that's how he would get around. Yeah, that. that's what that's what they would do to allow him uh, to, to compete. Per, to compete. Okay. But then in 1905, he joined the 101 Ranch Wild West show. And that's that is cool. up in north central Oklahoma. And uh, he there he was featured alongside you'll recognize these names Buffalo Bill, Will Rogers, Tom Mix. I'm, I'm not familiar with B. Ho Gray. I don't know mm -hmm. that person, but then Zach and Lucille Mulhall. I mean, Lucille Mulhall was like the number one cowgirl. She was probably the first cowgirl, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that really got in there and, and uh, rode and roped and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, he performed under the, under the name the Dusky Demon. Dusky Demon. Uh -huh. That's pretty. It's kind of a mysterious. It is a mysterious name. That's for sure. Um, but then then his list of honors. Um, he re he um, was named in 1971. He was named to the Rodeo Hall of Fame, National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Oh, at the National Cowboy and Western. And then in 89. He was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall mm -hmm. of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, tell them about the uh, stamp. stamp. Yeah, this this is this is an okay. interesting. So the U.S. Postal Service chose to include him in the Legends of the West commemorative sheet unveiling in December of 1993. However, about a month later, the family informed the U.S. Postal Service that the picture that they used was incorrect. So that first unveiling of Bill Puckett was not Bill Puckett, Bill Pickett, Pickett, excuse me. And so, yeah, it was his brother, Ben. It was his brother. It was mistakenly identified as Bill and it was actually it ben. Was ben. So the following year in October, um, was it 94? 1994, yes. mm -hmm. the U.S. released the correct stamp in the poster from the Bulldoggers. So, so this yeah. was the image that this, has been released. This is the one that actually went on the stamp. So, I, I mean, I'm really glad that they made a big public um, unveiling. Right. And they that didn't the family just sweep it under the rug and say, all right, we well, yeah, made it. Yeah, and then the family one. was able to help them correct all mm -hmm. that. So, um, you know, that was really important because uh, his brother, you know, had a lot of the skills too, but Bill is the one who put the notoriety groups. and kind yes. of got the group, the name up, the family name out there mm -hmm. and, you know, went out there and performed and exactly. Yeah. And so even though he was born in Texas, he settled in Oklahoma and that was, you know, the Wild West show and all of that, that was all part of Oklahoma. And just to kind of seal the deal on Bill Pickett being a great Oklahoman and inventor, um, he was inducted into the Jim Thorpe Association's Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame in 2018. And Jim so, Thorpe, right. that's just a name that we will have to cover another day. Right. Because yeah. that list so much. goes on and on. There's so much to say about that. Maybe Oklahoma, great Oklahoma athletes is, it could uh, be a, that'll be a trail talk that we'll do in the future. A, a, uh, um, so that completes volume one, guys, of our uh, Oklahoma inventors and mm -hmm. inventions. We hope that you've learned some things, um, that you feel inspired yourself. That's right. And, uh, you know, we're always looking for great new ways to um, promote people who are from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty excited that we're, uh, we're going to be we're talking about these. inventors That's and right. inventions in the future. It's so pretty exciting time tomorrow. Be sure and tune in at two o'clock. We have right Elena here. Hill. You know, she is the chalk artist who is she is phenomenal. She is so talented with chalk. Her well, talent goes on and on. Yeah. Her first love is not even art. Art. Yeah. Or that type of that art. type of art. She is a pianist extraordinaire. And so tomorrow she is going to be playing. She for even us. Likes her own music. She does. And it's not like little songs. It's like intricate piano music I, I i think you'll be very impressed and work working that is just it'll yeah. be very enjoyable so two o'clock tomorrow uh join us here at on, on trail talk i know and until then we are ready to yeah. sign off okay so happy trails, happy trails guys. bye guys happy trails <laughs>